Mr. Chairman and the Scientific Committee of the National Science Foundation for thank you for inviting me to give this presentation on vitamin D in reducing the incidence of uh, complication and deaths through boosting the immune system. This is from myself and my colleague Dr. Atula Polonovita. Vitamin D is in fact an essential hormone for our survival. So let's look at the evidence supporting the relation between vitamin D and COVID-19. Vast majority of people admitted to ICUs throughout the world or died with the COVID-19 had been reported to having hypovitaminosis D. In addition, the highest incidence of COVID-19 related deaths are occurring in the countries with less sunshine and related to less ultraviolet B irradiation. So black Asians and ethnic minority individuals has a disproportionately high death rates due to COVID, which I will elude later. So lack of exposure sunshine and deaths from COVID, in fact, related to, seems to be related to vitamin D. And uh, like my colleague, Dr. Grant and others have suggested that if we proactively given vitamin D as a supplement in a reasonable doses at the nursing home, the death rate could have been reduced by up to 17%. Nevertheless, the combination of advanced age, poor health, comorbidity and vitamin D deficiency indeed seems to be lethal for many of our senior citizens. So there are many studies have been published, but I'm just showing you a handful of them. And one of these is this one from Germany has shown that uh, the groups with age between 50 and 70 and <clears throat> in fact the, the people with the serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D less than 12 nanograms mil, which is severe deficiency are likely to die from it over 14 times. It's another study showing the relation between uh, COVID-19 cases per million in y-axis and the serum concentration of 24 hydroxy vitamin D in the X axis, showing that around 30 nanograms per mil on blood concentration, the cases per million, as well as the death per million, is, seems to be dramatically reduced. So, let's look at the ethnic disparities of uh, COVID, in this case, hospital death per 100,000 in various ethnic groups in UK. It clearly shows that the person with the higher melanin content in the skin, in other words, a darker skin color like the black, black Caribbeans and other ethnic minorities with the darker skin color has a higher death rate and the hospital administration admissions <coughs> from COVID. This is another study from uh, uh, description from, uh, from USA showing that the cases of per 10,000 people by age and <clears throat> the race. You can see compared to all, all, the, all ages, you can see that the whites has the least number of uh, cases per 10,000 or million per, <clears throat> per population, and the blacks and Latinos has a much higher incidence of hospital admission and deaths. So another uh, neat study uh, actually came from uh, <coughs> Dr. Grimes from UK showing the difference between the whites and ethnic minorities living in UK. In this case, had been used um, doctors as a group so that uh, all the, most of the uh, heterogeneity and confounders had been reduced. As you see here in the whites, you can see that the average death rate is about age 82, whereas the ethnic minorities, the death rate occur in doctors around age 52. So it's a major discrepancy between the, <coughs> these two uh, groups of people with almost 30 year difference in age when they die from COVID. So this alluded to the, the main difference is actually the exposure to sunshine, the ability to develop or generate vitamin D from the skin. 
So the goal for these, those with uh, comorbidity condition and especially those with uh, darker skin color during the COVID-19 era is to maintain the serum 25 hydroxy D between 40 and 60 or at least about 30 nanograms per mil. So what are the other recent data on COVID-19 and relationship to vitamin D? Here's one, of, one such study showing the relationship of COVID to latitude and the mortality. You can easily see that, uh, that <clears throat> those who are living in uh, the, the, the two ends or the northern and southern hemisphere had the highest mortality per million population. In fact, this usually occurs about the 42nd parallel with the south or north and you can see the death rate going up dramatically compared to those who are living around the equator, no matter what they do, what's the healthcare services, whether there's a curfew or, or lockdown, <clears throat> their death rates are uniformly lower except in India. But it seems to be getting under control there. Yeah. So let me show you a couple of other important areas. The gathering, for example, allowing gathering is mass gathering as happened in the Memorial Day in the United Kingdom. Two weeks later, we saw that the highest peak of COVID spreading around the country. This had been shown after opening the universities and spreading dramatically COVID in university cities in the United States. So also let me show you some relationship between the vitamin D in reduction of the severity and deaths. There's one such study showing that white non-Hispanic compared to Hispanics and black <coughs> non-Hispanic. You can see the rate of COVID positivity, PCR positivity, higher not only between the group but also when the serum level of 24 hydroxy D is lower. This irrespective of the level actually still you can see the major difference between these ethnic groups with a 40% reduction of PCR positivity with increasing PCR. Similar uh, data was published by Kaufman et al and using about 192,000 people's data and show that the PCR positive rate had been reduced by 40% in those who with a higher concentration and they are significantly related. Let me show another uh, neat experiment, uh, short term had been done in uh, Andalusia in Spain where you can see that the hospital admission rate was markedly reduced during the summertime due to sunshine and availability of vitamin D. And then it pe peaked up again in uh, November and early December where, where they introduced vitamin D in hospital patients. And that markedly reduced. Same happened in the ICU admissions, which up, down summertime is very low, and then went up with the <coughs> with the winter arise and they reduce with vitamin D deficiency. So as the death rates, you can see that markedly reduced. Nevertheless, now at the, at the end of January, it has been complicated by the death rate going up again and they were not sure exactly what's the reason of death rates going up, but it's thought to be due to a new variant has arrived in Andalusia region of COVID from South America and that is supposed to be spraying rapidly, much rapidly than they thought. But there could be other reasons as well. Nevertheless, let me also show you the comparison between Andalusia vitamin D experiment where during winter time it actually death rate reduced, whereas in the United Kingdom as actually it's markedly the opposite, going rates are still going up. So let me show you one meta-analysis of the effectiveness of vitamin D in controlling COVID-19. This you can see in the, in the websites and vdmetaanalysis.com and where you can see the uh, all the studies except two here have been shown to be, have a significant effect on reduction of the early to a certain degree late and indeed the, the symptomatic COVID-19 with usage of vitamin D with a reduction up to 75% of incidence. So in summary, the vitamin D benefits controlling COVID-19, including the stimulation of immune cells, both innate and adaptive. Vitamin D is a potent anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effect. 
It's an antimicrobial properties against viruses and bacteria. It prevents complications like cytokine storm. Formation of nucleotide antibody is increases and increases synthesis of soluble ACE2. I didn't have time to speak about, which is a very beneficial component reducing COVID. So let me show you two slides on the randomized control studies going on globally. This one in back in uh, April, June, July region, B2 had a study proposed with the, using the 400,000 units. So there's a this COVID prevention study, but that was not allowed or approved. That one we are using the 200,000 subject with placebo and control. Currently, there are just over 50 very large studies going on. They have been using the doses from 100. 100,000, 300,000, in some cases, 101.2 million international units of vitamin D using as a preventing or treatment. And you can see the dose varies tremendously from 100,000 to 500,000 and so on. So large doses of vitamin D used in emergencies like COVID is not unusual and it is the way to control the disease compared <coughs> contrary to the some pundits talking about uh, adverse effect. In fact, these doses you see on the single doses and never been shown to have uh, ad any adverse effects. So this is some just summarize the effect of vitamin D uh, effect of various agents you can use in uh, coronaviruses uh, to control it. And what is more important actually to effect of vitamin D has been affecting every step of these diseases in helping to control the disease. So, to, uh, for benefits for the Sri Lanka, for example, is actually vitamin D is effective against many viral diseases, especially dengue, and reduce incidence and severity and deaths from dengue if your, if your serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D level is in excess of 30 nanograms <coughs> a mil. Let me show one slide on vitamin D in reducing COVID severity, COVID control. Here's the death spiral of COVID-19, which can be blocked by vitamin D. The entry is blocked, can be blocked, so as uh, the, the production is to receptors in, in pulmonary and other epithelial cells beneficially, and can use also ACE inhibitors and uh, angiotensin receptor blockers, which also block the serenine angiotensin vicious cycle. And then that means, uh, <clears throat> through this means, can prevention or reduce the complication of COVID-19. Nevertheless, uh, the, we have to get back to the basics of wearing face mask, that's a N95. Uh, as a caution, is that cloth masks are not very efficient and probably no efficient than the 30 to 40 percent hand washing and avoiding these crowd gathering. So, few important things to keep in mind for the last two slides. There had been a handful of fake data reported with COVID-19 in, in vitamin D field early last year in key scientific journal. These are, have now been withdrawn from this journal. Vitamin D is one of one factor of many contributing to the stimulating the in, <coughs> immunity. Therefore, the balanced approach is essential for controlling and treating COVID-19. Importantly, vitamin D, although effective, it is not the panacea. It's not the answer to everything. So it is essential to adhere to the old public health measures to control COVID. In summary, Maintain the serum 24 hydroxy concentration about 30 nanograms per mil. Keep the immune system alert. Emergency situation, however, the doses as I showed with the randomized control style, it need to be 100,000, 400,000 range to rapidly boost the immune system. Alternatively, one can use a partially activated vitamin D, casviol, which can start acting within few hours of its application. After that, after taking several weeks or months, you can get back to the normal dose of vitamin D. These kind of uh, coherent strategies can not only save lives and also save the economy. So, adequate vitamin D levels reduce the incidence of COVID-19 and complication and deaths. Thank you and have a great day. Enjoy the symposium.